All right, uh, we're going to start talking about surface area of prisms and cylinders today. Um, kind of get started defining these prisms and cylinders. You got to remember that they have two congruent parallel bases, and that a face, a lateral face, is not a base. That's going to be important. The edges of the base are called base edges. A lateral edge is an edge not on the base, and I'll kind of show you that here in a minute. The lateral faces of a right prism are all rectangles. That's going to be another important sentence. Um, you got to remember that an oblique prism has at least one non-rectangular lateral surface. All right, so here's kind of what we're talking about. These would be my bases, and these rectangles along this prism would be faces, not bases. And this would be kind of what an oblique prism would look like. It's not these right here are not 90 degree angles. Also, a lot of vocabulary here at the front. Um, an altitude of a prism or cylinder is perpendicular. That's going to be another one of those important things to remember. Uh, perpendicular segment joining the plane of the bases. So this would be kind of a slanted prism where these right here, these angles down here are not 90 degrees. So we'd have to draw an altitude or a height. Remember that altitude and height are this, mean the same thing. The altitude or height would have to be 90 degrees from the base. Okay, so now we're going to define surface area as the total area of all the faces and curved surfaces of a three dimensional figure. That would include the bases. All right, so, kind of coming back up here, that would the total surface area would be the two base triangles and the three rectangles that wrap around this prism. Right, now this thing called a lateral surface area, which is the, all the rectangles, does not include the two bases. All right, um, the net, so if we take this prism, this triangular prism, and we kind of unfold it, we end up getting the two triangular bases, and we get these three rectangles um, in the middle, in between them. So this right here, this part of it, this H, A, B, and C, that's going to be if I were just looking for the lateral surface area. That's these right in here in between the two bases. Right. So here are the formulas that you need to know. The lateral area, remember that does not include the bases. That's going to be that formula right there. L is equal to pH, where P is the perimeter of the base, and H is the height of the prism. Right. And then this is called the surface area. That actually means total surface area, which is going to be that formula right there, pH plus 2B. Right. And then the special case would be the surface area of a cube, and that's going to be S equals 6S squared. Right. Let's look at some more information, and then we'll finally get to an example. Um, surface area. You can see that there, 2LW plus 2WH plus 2LH. That's if it's a right rectangular prism. So kind of another little formula that might be a little easier for a rectangular prism, something you're a little more used to, to seeing. Um, I do want to warn you that the surface area formula is only true for right prisms. Another one of those important things, it has to be a right prism. That means these angles are all 90 degrees, going from the base and the height, those angles right here, are 90 degrees. Okay. So this only works for right prisms, okay. which is what we have here in our first example. All right. So the lateral surface area is equal to P times H. Remember that P stands for perimeter of the base. All right, and in this instance, our base is going to be this bottom triangle or rectangle over here down here at the bottom. So the perimeter is going to equal 9 plus 7 plus 9 plus 7, which comes out to be 32. All right, and then the height is... This H is the height of the prism. 
which in this case my h is going to equal 14. So for my lateral surface area, that's going to be excuse me, that's going to be 32 times 14, which is equal to 448. So my lateral surface area is 448 feet square. All right, but it says lateral and surface area, so now I'm going to have to use my S formula, which is pH plus 2B. All right, and we solved, notice that the pH and pH, we already figured that out. So what we can do very easily is do 448, because I know what pH equals, because we just did it, plus 2 times B. So I need to find out what the B is. B stands for area of the base. Okay, and then so in this case, B is going to equal 9 times 7, which is 63. So in this total surface area formula, we have pH, which is 448, plus 2 times 63, which comes out to be 574. All right, so my lateral surface area is 448 feet squared. My total surface area is 574 feet squared. All right, this next example, find the lateral area and surface area of a right triangular prism with a height of 20 centimeters and base edges of 10 centimeters. So I'm going to leave that one up for you to try. Um, remember that your lateral surface area is P times H. Your total surface area is pH plus 2B. Okay, so check that one with me, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, um, now we're going to introduce what's called uh, lateral surface area of a cylinder, and that's the curved surface that connects the two bases. So down here at this bottom piece, I'm just talking about this rounded piece right here. You can think of it as a regular, like a, a can, and you want the label part of, it, of a can. All right. The axis of a cylinder is a segment with the endpoints at the center of the base. That would be this right here. That's the axis. Um, the axis of an oblique cylinder is not perpendicular. So this angle right here is not 90 degrees. Okay. Now let's look at the formulas. Um, the lateral surface area, if I were to take the cylinder and I flatten it out, I get that rectangle in the middle of it. That would be what would wrap around. That would be the kind of the label, if you want to think of it, um, like a can, a food can. And then these two would be the bases. So my lateral surface area does not include my bases, so that is going to be 2 pi r h. And the total surface area is going to be 2 pi r h um, plus 2 pi r squared. All right, so now let's do some practice work. Find the lateral uh, surface area. So again, L is equal to 2 pi r h. Okay. Um, this right here, the 16, that's my diameter. So to find my radius, I have to cut that in half. So my radius is 8 inches. Okay. My height is going to be 10 inches. Now when we're doing this stuff, I strongly suggest that you get your whatever the, the uh, variables are, the things that you're solving, that you're going to plug in, find those first. That makes this, all you have to do is substitute, because we have 2 times pi. I figured out my radius is h, my height is 10. Okay. Once you can find these dimensions, then all you have to do is substitute into the equation or the formula. All right. Um, it says leave your answers in terms of pi, so I'm going to kind of just move this over to the back. So I end up getting 2 times 8 times 10 times pi. These I can combine. 2 times 8 is 16 times 10 is going to be 160 pi. And my dimensions are inches squared. So my lateral surface area is 160 inches squared. Um, then I need to find my total surface area, which is going to be the 2 pi r h, notice that's this side, plus pi r squared. 
All right, so very easily I can just substitute the 160 pi in for this first term right here plus my pi times radius squared. Well, my pi goes there, my radius, we figured that was 8, so that's 8 squared. I'm going to rearrange that. 160 pi plus 8 times 8 is 64 pi. Okay, and then if I combine those, I can combine them because they both have the same variables or pi symbol. And that comes out to be 224 pi inches squared. That would be my total surface area. All right, let's look at another example of this cylinder. Find the lateral and surface area. So again, get in the habit of writing down the formula. And um, go ahead and figure out what dimensions you know. You know that the circumference is 24 pi centimeters. Um, and a height equal to half the radius. So h is equal to half my radius. All right, so in order for me to solve this, I need to know what uh, my radius and my height are. Um, the circumference formula is 2 times pi times radius. So really quickly, I could solve this. 24 pi is equal to 2 pi r. I divide both sides by 2 pi. That factors down to 1. Um, pi's factor out here as well. 24 divided by 2 is 12. All right, so my height is half of my radius, which is 12, so I know that that is 6. So my height is 6 centimeters. And I know my radius is 12 centimeters. Okay. Now, um, notice right here that it's 2 pi r, which is the formula, or that's what circumference is. So I know what that value is. I'm just going to substitute 24 pi in there. And then my height, we know that that is um, 6, is what we just found out. And 24 times 6 comes out to be 144. And then we just move that pi down to the end, 144 pi centimeters squared. Right, and then from there, we need to find the total surface area. So again, that's 2 pi rh plus pi r, actually 2 pi r squared. All right, um, this first part we already solved, so that's 144 pi plus 2 times pi, and then my radius we said was 12 squared. So moving that around, 144 pi is equal to 2 times 144, which is 288 pi. Again, I can add those two together. And so this comes out to be 432 pi centimeters squared. That's going to be my total surface area. All right. I am going to leave number five for you to check with me to make sure you're understanding and you know how to do this. All right, this next example says find the surface area of the composite figure and round to the nearest tenth. So I'm looking at this and I see that there's a rectangular prism and then there's a cylinder sitting on top of it. Now, um, surface area, that's going to mean total surface area. Um, but the thing is with this is that there is this um, cylinder or this, I guess, for the, the, excuse me, the space of the cylinder, the circle part right here, um, it's touching the rectangular prism. So we're going to have to subtract that from the total surface area because we're not, it's not a surface anymore. If it's sitting on top, um, you don't see and you can't touch that surface right there. So um, let's go ahead and do the rectangular prism first. Um, that's going to be pH plus 2B, surface area of the rectangle. Um, perimeter, I'm going to go ahead and use these right here. This would be my base. So I would have 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4, which comes out to be 18. My height would be 9. 
and then uh, let's see go ahead and find out what the area of the base is that's going to be 5 times 4 which is 20 so now I can put my numbers in P we got 18 times 9 plus 2 times 20 and let's see what that comes out to be and that comes out to be 202 Alright, now what I want to do is I want to find, I'm going to go ahead and find out what the lateral surface area is of this um, cylinder, which is 2 pi RH. Um, they went ahead and told us that the radius is 2. Now the height of this cylinder is 3, so then it's going to be 2 times 2 times 3, and then I'm just going to move, remember I can just move that pi down there at the end, or to the end. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3, that's going to make 12 pi. Alright, now again, remember, the reason I didn't do total surface area is because we're not including this bottom base right here. But I do need to find one of the bases, and that's going to be pi r squared. So then my um, radius is 2, that's going to be 4 pi. So I have 12 pi for my lateral, plus that this top circle right here, and then I have the area of the rectangle. So my answer is going to be 202 plus 12 pi plus 4 pi. Remember, because there's only one circle that we're actually seeing. Uh, it does say round to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to put that in the calculator right quick. And I get that this comes out to be 252.3 centimeters squared. That would be my final answer for this one. All right. Now this last one I'm going to leave up to you again. A, a sporting goods company sells tents in two styles. Um, the side and floors of each tent are made of nylon. Which tent requires less nylon to manufacture? To kind of get you started, you're going to need the total surface area of this pup tent and the total surface area of this tunnel tent. And you're going to compare the two and see on which one is going to require less fabric.